Good evening. I'm Louis Armstrong, Minister Louis Armstrong. We've got a very exciting video that we want to introduce to you. And uh, Corinthia Davis, the camera lady, also the individual that gives these nice videos. You can see her on one of the videos, uh, several videos. She's been to come after this one. And we're going to really bring her out so she, you can see her in action as she talk about the things that dealing with this new paradigm shift. Now, I'd like to introduce to you um, the book. I always try to show you the book because it's very important. In this book is this lecture right here. This lecture is entitled 2018 to 2020, The Prodigal Son, Negro. Okay, so you know what the prodigal son is all about. It is about the Negro race going through challenges in life and, and, and showing you all the way from the time of Egypt all the way this way. Okay, now a lot of times individuals will talk about the Hebrew Israelites, they'll talk about uh, Israel and etc. And I'm going to say, like I always say, Israel is a code name. We must remember that Israel is a code name. And using Hebrew typology, you're going to see the Bible totally different from the way that you've ever seen this Bible before. This is a new movement. This movement is written in Nostradamus writing, Edgar Casey writing, Jane Dixon writing, and it's also written in the Bible. And I'm going to show you some things that you've never seen before. And this is what this ministry is all about, to open your eyes to where God wants you to be at at this particular time of human history. Now, what I will do, I want you to purchase this book. Please purchase this book. I need you to purchase this book because this book is going to help us. But it's also going to help you. In this book, it's going to show you the uh, chapter on the prodigal son. It's going to break it down to let you know that it's dealing with a certain group of people in America. This Bible that we have here, this Holy Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, is about America. I said over and over again, although it may use the term Assyria, it may use the term Babylon, it may use the term uh, Israel, it may use the different terms, but it's all, all this here is a language, a coded language revolved around what King James sent to his land over in the Western Hemisphere, the United States of America. I would say over and over again, the individuals studied alchemy. These individuals know how to look into the future. There are several ways they use to do what they call time traveling. We're in a metric. We must understand this stuff so we can be able to move on to the place where God wants us to be because we're in a paradigm shift and we must know this stuff now. We must come out of the dark age into the age of light, the age of war and, de and, and deception into the age of peace. And this is what this ministry is all about, to get you to that next level of consciousness that God will dwell in your consciousness and open your penal gland will be opened up so God can let that Holy Spirit flow in you that you will feel and understand the presence of God in your everyday life. Then it's very important to see that. Now, going back to the book. This is in the book. You need to purchase this book. This one called Judgment of America. The other one called Black Nostradamus, Prophecy of America Future. Now, I have got my little royalty check, and I know that some people in this audience have purchased some books. And those individuals that's in this audience, please, thank you. Thank you for your interest and your input in this. But what I need now, I need other individuals to get involved, and I need those ones who have purchased a book, if you may, for my sake, Buy books or get your friends to buy the books so we could be able to move this ministry. No one is sending tithes and offering. But I take that back. I have one uh, 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 guy that constantly sending me letters and he mean well. And he sending me letters, keep me up on what he's dealing with, it, et cetera. And I'm praying over that. And we got other individuals who got good ideas and stuff that have been sending me letters. And thank you. Many others send you letters, send you information, send you help. And help this ministry out and purchase this book, Judgment of America by Louis Jerome Armstrong. You could get it online at Opera House. You could get it at Barnes and Nova, Amazon, etc. Please do that for us. Okay, now, this is exciting to me. I love this particular teaching. Most people, when they read this, they don't really know what it's all about. They really don't. They think it's a story about 2,000 or 3,000 some years ago. Uh, 
uh, 2,000 plus years ago because you're going to hear Jesus. Is this story going to be written under the words of the writings of Jesus? Always remember, the initiates, the initiates formed this book. In the Hebrew typology, the initiates formed this book that a person in the future, a prophet in the future, will come along with the keys, with the keys of knowledge and unlock this book and present these truthisms to you at this particular time in human history. Now, we must see this. Luke, 4, Luke 15, 11 through 32, and he said, and he said, uh, a certain man, this is what Jesus taught him, a certain man had two sons. Now, when we see this story, we're going to uh, 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 relate it to somewhat Noah, okay? Now, although it's sort of about Noah, but it isn't, but it is, okay? I'm going to say it in that way. Noah had two sons, three sons from the Bible, uh, and one of them was a young one and an older one, and they talk about the young one and the older one, Jophis, which is uh, uh, as history show, or how they show his story show, that he lived in the area of Europe. The other one is Ham, he lived in the area of Africa, the Middle East area. Now, and then he had a third son, okay, Shem. Now, well, this story is about two sons, and we must understand now the Quran show that it was four sons. But the whole thing of this story is not about four sons, not about three sons. It's about the events of two sons, and we must see that. And these two sons relate to the Eurocentric, as I got it here, in America, the younger and the older. It, it's uh, the older and the younger in America. The white man and the black man, simple as that. That's what the story is about, okay? I always say, King James wrote this book, had this book compiled with the Shakespeare individuals who, individuals who knew alchemy, and he sought this book up that it could come to America, and what they call the muse will take this book, and they take this book, and they preach this book, and they talk about this book, and it was for them to carry it on until the initiates that supposed to come at this time to use the keys of knowledge, what we call Hebrew typology, to open this up. Now, I don't use Hebrew typology and that word Hebrew typology because that's what the scholars uh, mostly got the peoples in. But it go back further, that term go back further than Hebrew. It go back to the Egyptian mystery system. And we must understand that. It's part of the Egyptian mystery system. And we should understand that because the culture of civilization was created by the ancient Egyptians. And we must understand that. The ancient Egyptians have a lot to do with all of this. And what they have done, the Eurocentric have written the ancient Egyptian out. They don't want you to see the ancient Egyptian. They don't want you to see your fathers. They want you to go back to the Hebrew Israelites or this and that and that and that. And not uh, showing you that the uh, Israelites was part of the Egyptians. It was no difference between the Egyptian and the Hebrew Israelite. And you got these people right here talking about, well, the Israelite school was one way, or uh, the Egyptian school was another way, and there was a whole different race of people. That's crap. Don't fall for the hype. That's crap. They were the same people. Egypt controlled uh, Egypt. It controlled Africa. It controlled uh, uh, what they call the Middle East. Understand the Middle East. The Middle East is on the continent of Africa. It's on that rock. The continent of Africa. They came up with this term Middle East. This was nothing. That, that area, the uh, uh, Egyptians control all that area. And you, we must understand these things. Because we've been lied to. Okay? We really have been lied to. And we need to learn these truths. Now, let's get to the sun. Okay? The story is about the, the Eurocentric man and the black man and the black man journey and the Eurocentric man journey coming to this land, okay? Now, we must see this. Now, again, it say, and he said, a certain man had two sons, okay? And we're explaining that. The older son, and uh, uh, older son and the younger son. The white man was the older son, which is not in reality, is how the story goes, Noah, and the black man was the younger in this story, okay? Now, when we begin to see this, Luke 15, 12, and the younger son, then the younger of them, the younger, he's the younger son, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me a portion of goods that follow to me. Now notice what the father did say, and, and the father did. And he divided unto them, not just him, them, his living. Now, 
What happened in history? During the time that we read the story, the, the story of Noah, we find out that Noah, uh, Ham's son, rose up and they uh, built uh, Egypt and, 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 and et cetera, et cetera. Now, I must say this. This is a story. This goes back further than how the story was written because they formed the story to make you think that this world civilization is no more than 6,000 years old. You got to understand that they formed this story like that. And I must come as a messenger of God and open up this can of worms so you can see the reality of this. Egypt is older than that. Egypt is thousands and thousands of years old. There is no 6,000 year time of man civilization. That is nonsense. So we don't even, even need to get in that. And the any Egyptologists that tell you that crap don't know what the heck he's talking about. And we got to understand that the, the way that they talk that stuff now and science is hitting kids because science know better. Science know better. And they're not going to teach that like that. Now, we must understand that the Catholic Church wanted to form that so you'll think, you'll think the way that they want you to think. You'll think on his story. And we got to get out of his story. They even formed the culture of Egypt. They formed the, the, the history of culture of Egypt in their in their writings and stuff and telling you, dictate to you how Egypt culture really was and how long it was, etc. That's all lies. So it's time to get out of the lies and let's learn the truth about this matter. Now, but we're going to deal with the story so we can identify these two characters, this older son and the younger son. In Luke 15, 13, and no man, and it says, he gave it to them. Always remember, he gave it to them, and you study the story of Ham, how, and the black man in Egypt, how he was civilization, and through that civilization, he had a language, and through that language, the other languages came to existence because the Egyptian formed the other individual language because they was an uncivilized uh, a group of people. And the civilization of the Egyptian, the ancient Egyptian, was the one that brought on the, uh, the Grecian language alphabet. It brought on the, uh, the Roman alphabet, which is the Latin alphabet, and to the alphabet that we have now, the English alphabet. All these things were formed around Egypt. God has said, bless the Egypt, my people. Assyria are the works of my hand, and Israel my inheritance. And we must understand what that means. It's very important. Now, what you're going to find out is that this son is going to take a journey. But it's in Luke uh, 15, 13, and not many days after, the younger son gathered together and took his journey into a poor country, foreign country. And there wasted his substance with bride and living. Now, what happened through history? When you find out that at the time, let's go with uh, the Grecian Empire and Bartholomew, you got Alexander, they call the great, uh, I just use the term Alexander. If y'all want to call him the great, we'll use the term great. Alexander then came and took over Egypt. Now, Egypt didn't have no need for an army and stuff to fight against them. They was a civilized people. They were civilized. They didn't need to uh, go and kill up somebody and destroy somebody. But this, the Grecian came in there and was a barbarian type individual. They did not have a culture like Egypt. They didn't even have an alphabet at that time. The individuals that came into Egypt, as they call Socrates, Aristotle, Plato, I mean, all these individuals who came into Egypt, they learned, but when they came back to give the Grecian that knowledge, they wanted, they wanted, the Grecian wanted to kill them because they didn't want them to, what they call, corrupt them with a civilization in that way. They weren't ready for that. They was more barbarian. And I'm not taking from the Eurocentric that live in that area because that's just the way they was at that time. And we have to see that. See, the civilization of Egypt go back and people study about thought. They'll find out that thought goes way back and help build that. And uh, some tied in with Atlantis and etc. I'm not going to take it to that way. But I'm going to just say Egypt, the civilization of Egypt, helped form what we call our now day uh, creation of civilization. Now, what we need to see is that in the story of uh, Ham, they talk about Ham's son. He uh, had Nimrod. Nimrod became a mighty hunter. 
and Nimrod built cities and et cetera, et cetera. So you see the first, after no time, the first city that you seen built was under Nimrod uh, uh, guidance, et cetera. Now, even they talk about the Tower of Babel and all that under Nimrod time, and et cetera. But we've got to see that the Egyptian civilization was a vast civilization, more advanced. And I've been to Egypt, and one day it would be nice for you to take a trip to Egypt and visit the museum and see the artifacts and et cetera, see all that, and you'll realize that these are advanced, these people were much advanced than we are today. I have seen some things that battle the mind because how it was made. You can't even figure it out. Even the people, the guys and individuals who guide you and telling you, they don't even know. That's how advanced they were. Now, but the Eurocentric, they never want you to see that part of it. When you see black folks going back, like this movie that they got out, they take them back to the uh, west side of Africa, somewhere like that, and they give them a spear and a bush stuff and all this nonsense, and, and, and they're trying to make you think that this is where your civilization started. People, your civilization come out of Egypt. Blessed be Egypt, my people. And we got to understand that. God have given us, he have said, he said, I call my son out of Egypt. And that's where your mind's supposed to be. You got to return your mind back to Egypt so you can see what this Bible is really trying to say to you and see what God is really trying to say to you. Because when you see Abraham, you see Egypt. When you see Moses, you see Egypt. When you see Joshua, you see Egypt. When you see Jesus, you see Egypt. Come on, my people. Wake up to understand what God's trying to say to you today. You got these individuals in these pulpits, these, uh, my brothers and sisters in there that don't know the uh, codes or anything, don't know that this Bible is a coded book, and they've been taught through the Eurocentric to teach it literally. They really, their time is running out. And I'm just telling you how it is. Their time is running out. Either they got to change or fall to the wayside. So Daniel has already prophesied on what's going to happen in that way. Say, so many going to shine as the firmament, and many are going to go into everlasting content. What is your plight? And we need to understand this. Now, let's get back to this. Now, this is about the transatlantic slave trade. The Egyptian, the black man coming through time, creating empires, later the Mali Empire, the Songhai Empire, in the um, west area of Africa and central Africa, and all these things, civilization. These people are civilization builders. And we got to understand that you are civilization builders. Even when you go back to the Moors and put the Moors in here as time go on, you'll see civilization building. Then this is what you must understand. These people had alphabets. These people had a language. These people had a culture. These people shape humanity into what it's supposed to be. But you're going to see the transatlantic slave trade in this. And then you're going to see Luke 15:15, uh, 15, 15. And he went and joined himself to a citizen. Now notice this word citizen. When you see the citizen, this word citizen always deal with Rome, Roman citizens, and etc. You deal with a citizen, a Eurocentric, a Eurocentric, that's that older son, uh, a citizen of that country, and this is America, Rome, uh, 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 Roman individuals from Europe came over here and pushed our other ancestors off their land, our other black uh, 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 people off their land, the Indians, the original individuals here, and they pushed them off their land and they began to enslave them just like they enslaved the Africans. So we can, must understand this stuff. So it went and joined itself with a system of that country and he sent him into his field to feed. Now he done took the land now. The U.S. Central done took the land, so he sent him into his field to feed the swine. Okay, this is about slavery. Understand this prodigal son. God wants you to understand that the things that you need to know is written in this book. I hear many people, I hear one of the brothers who I admire a lot, uh, last name Williams. He's a good researcher. And I heard him say something that hurt my heart. He said, you need to get rid of the Bible. There is no Jesus, and etc. Now, there wasn't a man named Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you something you may not like what I'm going to say. The brother has a lot of truth in what he say, and he do a heck of a lot of good research. But at the same time, he didn't understand the spiritual aspect of it all and how God is taking us to a certain level and how Jesus is real. But you got to understand time, the past, present, future is one. 
he just never seen Jesus. And he never seen Jesus in the writing. So he could say something, and that's one man's opinion, but it don't make it right, Mr. Walter Williams. And I do love you, and I do respect you. And I know that what you are giving is a need for the people, although some of them may not understand. They shut off when they hear you say those type of things. See, I seen Jesus, and I understand that Jesus is real. For me to say Jesus walked the earth 2,000 years ago, I cannot say that because I know a lot that I don't want to say at this moment. Because the Gnostics never seen Jesus as someone that walked the earth. The Gnostics seen Jesus as someone that they deal with at that time from the heavens. But I don't want to get into that because this lecture is not about that. But I want to say, we have to understand the spiritual aspect of it. It's good to be able to research, but you got to know God at the same time. And that's very important. And although they use the term God and say that, but you got to know the source. Like the Egyptians do. We are spiritual people. We come down here to live a physical experience. And we must understand that. And we must understand the connection to our penal gland. We must understand the connection to our fathers back in Egypt. And if we begin to make that connection, we'll begin to live and do the things that God wants to do. There's many others out there talking against that Bible. But they don't have no keys. And they got to be able to translate it because literally, they read it literally like they research. And if you read it literally like you research it and don't know what the initiates was doing with that book, then you're going to be off base. And you can lead people astray because you don't know the keys to the book. But at the same time, I'm all at the good research. So I'm not here to knock a brother. Shoot, you have to help a brother get back on pace if he chooses to. But you don't knock the brother because God use us and, to, and show us in certain ways and then he bring others to help embrace what we know to get what they know in order to make this thing smooth because it's all about the liberation of our people. We cannot be liberated fighting one another. But when we see a brother, we got to call it out and say, brother, I respectfully disagree with certain things. And I don't want to get into that no more than that. It is others. Next time, I'm going to start talking about some of the others, too. But I ain't going to do that. But I love that brother because I listen to that brother. And I know that brother's got a lot of truth. A lot of truth in it. And I must respect him. Now, at the same time, we've got to see this other stuff. Luke 15, 16. And he, now he, he was sent into the field. And what happened? We know the story of the transatlantic slave trade. The Eurocentric man needed labor for it, so he went and got you, either from the indigenous, from, from, from the uh, Indians that existed, push off your land, enslaved some of you, and then the other ones he got, brought them from Africa, from different parts of Africa, to work the land, because they needed that. And the American dream was about what? Capitalism was about what? What was the American dream originally about? A lot of land and free labor. That's what it was really about. So black folks, you ain't never really living no American dream because you was the dream, okay? So yeah, don't get it. I think you know about the American dream. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. Luke 15, 16. And he, he could faint, had filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And notice this, and no man gave unto him. What is that? Now, we start eating the throwaways. And eating the throwaways, that's what the master gave us because they wouldn't give us the best. They wouldn't give us the thing he was eating. So we had the collard greens. Our, our ancestors took the collard greens and took the nape bone from the, uh, from the swine. And we had that. We had pig feet. It's showing me. We had that pig feet and stuff like that. And we had them chilies and all this other stuff. And we used to eat that. We even made a delicacy out of it. That's why sometimes you see black people having family reunion. They got to have their collard greens and their black eyed peas and uh, ham hock or black eyed peas and uh, neck bones, smoked neck bones and stuff like that. Hard cornbread with tra crackling in it and all that. Those was what our ancestors made out of delicacy. But we got to understand, no one gave us that. There was no science in it. The chicken was nothing that for you to eat. It was stuff for you to throw away. The Eurocentric century man did not eat that stuff because he knew 
that there was no science in it. It knew that it had disease and bacteria in it. But because of our sweating so hard, working from sun up to sun down, and we were able to work that stuff out of us and still go on as a people, God was still smiling at us, no, although we was put in that condition. God just ain't permit us to go in that condition. This you and man put you in that darn condition just to be afflicted and etc. He made you a slave, a slavery that never existed in humanity. But God wanted you to remember all that because God is trying to bring you out, black man and black woman, to be something special. And I'm here as a messenger to let you know it's your day and your time. That's why you see me talk about 2018 to 2020. Now, let's go on. And it say, uh, after the soul food diet was in there, we're going to see some other things. Luke 15, 17. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough and I perish and, and, and to spare and I perish with hunger? Now, what was happening? What happened in history to, to get him to come to that level? They started what you call the... Uh, Ending the slavery in the north and stuff like that, abolition of slavery and thing like that, and they was kind of bringing the black man somewhat out of those condition he was in. But the south was still deep into slavery; it was bringing out of it, and the black man wanted to be able to be more than what he was. And you see, uh, Luke fifteen eighteen, and I will arrive and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And before thee. And we got to understand that. See, the black man was introduced to Christianity. And in Christianity, he was believing that God was for him as well. He wasn't just for the white man, but he was for the black man as well. And it's very important to see this stuff. That the black flight was finna come up, about to come up. And I'm going to talk about that over here. But I want to go and cover this on the black flight was about to come up. They gave them the AME church. And they was moving up. The black man was moving up. And what did it say? And he arose and came to his father. But he was yet a great way off. In other words, he was away from emancipation proclamation. He was away from uh, the civil rights, uh, voting rights bill. He was away from that time. He was away from the time that you have the first black president in the United States. He was away from that time. It wasn't his time yet. That 400 years of affliction that was shown to Abraham had to fulfill itself. So he was still a far way off. And we got to see how this thing worked. And what we're going to see, but but what you gonna, you're going to see that, and he, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, when you begin to understand counting the stars and the 400 years, you know, on the the the, the, uh, the other 200 years, you got 400 years, they're going into all this with slavery and locking them down and going through so much. But then the next, next part of the 400 years, they're coming out of that condition. You got from the ship, hauling them in, and then you got from the fish under Christianity. When you study the story of Jonah, that's what it's all about, the story of Jonah, dealing with the, the Congo part of it, and then the men here and the fish coming under Christianity, which is another lock and key on that mental state. Now we must see this. But this individual God kissing, God was about to bring this black man out of the condition. And what was the kiss all about? The Emancipation Proclamation. If you take the golden ratio and you divide into that 400 years, 144 thousand days, you will get the time that the Emancipation Proclamation was written up and distributed to the people. Most people got to understand that. That's in sacred geometry. You don't learn that in the church. You can only get that from a prophet of God who's a messenger of God at this particular time of human history. These are the things that this Bible includes in it and you don't know. You need to know this and you're not going to get this in the pulpit. You have to come this direction so God can open your eyes and your mind to the reality of what is. People, your ancestors in ancient Egypt knew this stuff. And that's why Abraham was 
God sent him down into Egypt so he could learn and know these things. So you could be able to have this writing at our time of human history. Now, we must see this um, very carefully. And Luke 15, 21, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. Now understand, heaven have 37 different meanings. So don't think he's talking about just in the sky. Okay, and in thy sight. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Now we must see that what happened in history, when he took the language away, when he took the ability for you to read, to comprehend what the word of God was saying, to comprehend the knowledge of God, the textbook was taken away. You had no, no identity. It was called sir, three-fifths of a man, and all this other nonsense. He stripped you. He stripped you of your identity. He stripped you of who you were. You didn't know anything about ancient Egypt right now. And right now, they can give you a movie about Africa, and you got your boule Negroes and the ones that's under the boule Negro got you running around talking about, go see this, go see that. But people, let me tell you one thing. White man ain't going to never give you something in his day and time to give you the true knowledge to release you from this condition. Don't think no movie going to release you from no condition and think that that's all what it's all about. Okay, please wake the heck up and let's see the truth because I love you and God love you. Although I went to see the movie, I look at it as a movie, but I'm into this type of teaching. I look between the gaps and I see the propaganda that they've been doing for hundreds of years and I just, it hurts when I see that. I, it hurts when I see Hollywood don't take us no further back than the Bush people. It hurts when I see that. I have never seen a Hollywood movie take us back to ancient Egypt and show us our ancestors and show us our, how we created civilization and how we shaped this world to be what it is. I haven't seen that yet. If it is, please write me, email me, let me know because I haven't seen that right now. Now, we got to see this prodigal son because this prodigal son is very important. This is you, black man. This is this the story revolved around you, black man and black woman. This is about your life coming out of condition and God bringing you up to deliver you. Now we must understand this. Uh, okay. Now what the father did? The father said, but the father said to his servants. Understand this, because this is very important to know. The father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe. Now we got to understand what these these symbols mean. What the robe mean? Robe mean authority. You take the robe and you see anybody in the courtroom or something, they put that robe on that right hand. Put that robe on, put this hand in there, put that robe on there. Okay? That's the authority of kingship. That's the authority of ruler, being a ruler. Okay? And he didn't say any kind of a robe. He said the best, the best robe, that means you got to have supreme power, supreme authority. Look at that. Supreme political power. God wants you to have to supreme political power and the only way you're going to have it, you have to have your own land mass. You have to have your own nation. You've got to be the ruler of your destiny. And then he said and put it on him. Okay? That means that God's going to bring individuals into the black people's life to make sure the black people get to that place where God's word have said he is to be and she is to be. And we must understand that. God don't play. He don't lie. He's real. And we must see him as real. Now, and he said, and put a ring on his hand. What the ring represents. This is the left hand. This is the hand where you put the ring in. That means to rule, to lead, to, uh, to rule over your people, to have the authority, to be able to build your community like you're supposed to, to have that lifestyle that you're supposed to have as a people. No drive-by shootings in your community. No police beatings in your community. Your community is ran how you want it to be ran. See this thing very closely. And he said, uh, and he said, uh, 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 rain on his hand. And then he said, and shoes on his feet. What shoes represent? Economics. Why is that economic? Because everything economically comes from the earth. We are to have, you hear the term in our culture, you are to have a strong economic base. That's what economics is all about, the shoes all about. And then he said, and bring hither the fattest calf and kill it. 
That means diet and appetite. Those are the five laws of God. Okay, he kissed them, morals. Uh, he put the robe on him, political. He put the ring on his finger, social. Okay? And then he put the shoes on his feet, economic, and then he gave him the diet and the appetite. That's the five laws of God. And we must see that, and they write in here. See, once you know what this stuff is, it fit with every area of the scripture and what it talks about. But you don't learn this in the pulpit. You need to know this stuff. Because if you don't know that you're supposed to have your own business and work it with your own hand, as it says in Thessalonians, if you don't understand that, then you're missing the foundation of what God, where God wants to take you at. You're supposed to have your own banking system. You're supposed to have your own finance and all of that. You're supposed to control that. No, nobody else. You shouldn't have to go to the U.S. Century Bank to get a loan. You shouldn't have to go to the U.S. Century Insurance Company to get coverage. These things is unheard of. You got between four, 50 and 60 million people in this nation that don't have your own uh, banking system, don't have your own franchises, don't have your own nothing. Come on, my people. We are perishing because of lack of knowledge. We got to get out of that literal teaching of the Bible that some white man, your century, Jesus, going to come and deliver us. That's Caesar Bolger, uh, uh, that's the, the Pope's son. That's a picture of him. And before him, it was, it was Serapis, okay? That, that Ptolemy the first created. Come on, people. And this is why I don't come against brothers like Williams and other brothers who know these truthisms in that way. I'm bringing you more to it than that but yet at the same time, that is needed as well. We need to see this thing the right way. You are the culture. You are the nation building. You are the, the controller of your own universe. And we got to see this. Now, dealing with this. Now, we're going to see that in, in, in Luke 15, 24, but this is my son, now this is God talking, but this is my son was dead. If you were dead, then there need to be a resurrection from the dead. Now, this son is moving around. He's doing stuff, but he's dead. Why? He's dead to the knowledge of himself. He's dead to the knowledge of his ancestors. He's dead to the knowledge of understanding his relationship with his creator. And that's where the black man is dead at. He don't understand his creator. He don't understand his fathers. He been told to go back to that part of Africa and, and, and focus on that part of Africa and all this other stuff. And you need to go back to Egypt. Not modern Egypt. Ancient Egypt. Your fathers. Your fathers. And how they govern and rule things. That's what you got to go back to. Anybody want you to literally see the Bible? You'll never get it. See, God was so crassful that he put the initiates to put inside the Bible the truthism that they could get to us at this time. You can't throw the Bible away, brothers. You got to be able to discern the Bible, understand the language and what it's really all about. They never taught you Hebrew typology. They never taught you that the Bible was a coded book and gave you some code so you could understand it. They didn't tell you what your left hand was and your right hand are. They tell you to hold your right hand in the court of law, but never told you why. They tell you to put your ring on your left hand, but never told you why. They tell you to look up for God, but never tell you what it's all about. We need to understand the five laws of God because the ten laws of Moses are in two of the five laws of God. And we need to see this. Luke 15, 24. But this, my son, was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be married. That's where you're going. You're going out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, which is a paradigm shift. You've got to get yourself in line with God. God is about to move you, and this is what this is, this transition, 2018 to 2020. This is where the prophet's son is going at. You look at 365.25 uh, days a year from August the 1st, 1619 
be, yeah, 1619, it will take you to 2019, right in between here, okay? God want to bring you out of this condition. God said that he will give you great substance. God said that he's going to judge that nation that have afflicted you, which is America, and you must understand that. See, God got to get this thing right because the word of God is on the line, and he's going to do the right thing. Daniel 9, 25 to 27, you're going to hear Daniel talking about it at the time, that this, at the same time, in between this time here, at this time here, that there's a Messiah, the Prince, will come. In Genesis 49, 10 through 12, the Negro Messiah is talking about. And we're going to cover this so we can see what we got over here, that we can understand what this is all about. Now, Genesis 15, 5, and he brought him forth. Abroad, And this is the beginning of uh, Abraham talking. And God brought Abraham abroad, brought him over here. Abraham was shown America. People talking about he was shown Canaan. All right? That was no strange land, Abraham. America. Abraham was shown America. And it's a map that I have here. And I'm going to show you something that you haven't seen. When you put this map together, and I see, could they see this? Mm -hmm. When you put this map together, you could see... Israel, and you can see Florida and how this similarity is. You see this lake here in Israel. Okay, let me turn it this way. Okay. <laughs> you see this lake here, this big lake here, and you see uh, Bethlehem and Jerusalem and uh, et cetera. Can we get it? Okay. And this is stuff that you need to see. And that's where you can see the similarity and why you can see what's called topographics and see that Abraham was actually looking at this land over here. This land was abroad from Africa. Now, what we need to see is what Abraham was shown to see you and his part of the son working. In this, Genesis 15, 5, and he brought him, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars that if thou be able to number them, and then he says, so shall thy seed be. Now he showed Abraham this. Abraham seen this in chapter 15, 5. Abraham seen that. And he told them to count the stars, if thy can. He said, number the stars, if thy can. And see, we got to understand what this is. And, and if thy be able to number them. This is what he's talking about right here. This is what he's talking about. You can see, see you century knew this. He even put this on the back of his dollar bill. Oh, man, this is what, why when I look at it. See, he knew the arts. He learned the arts from our ancient fathers. And he put that. When you see these stars here, star, look on the back of your dollar bill. You see these stars here. You're going to see 13 of them. Most people think that you're talking about the 13 uh, families. No, you're talking. It's 13 of them dealing with the Felonici sequence. The 13 uh, move over in the uh, Felonici sequence uh, series is 144. That's telling you about 144,000 uh, days that he was going to afflict you. He signed it up. He knew what he was going to do. He used the energy. He used the universal energy when he learned from the Egyptian. But he didn't use it for good. He used it for bad, for his advantage. And he did this uh, to put you in certain conditions. So what you got from each each point here, you got what you call a jubilee. 49, 50 years jubilee. And you can see this and I put number one, what it did August the 1st, 1619. He saw that particular date because he's dealing with energy. Okay? The thing that your ancestors deal with. He took what your ancestors uh, had to, instead of helping enhance you, he put it there to afflict you. And you got to see this. And you're not going to see this kind of teaching in a church environment. I wish I could teach this in a church environment, but they're not ready for it. People, God's going to pull you out of that. He's going to pull you out of that condition so you can learn these truthisms, so you can move forward for your family. Because what this Eurocentric man has done, he done got back over here now. This thing done went all the way around. Now he want to afflict you again. That's his desire. See, what this is, this is a... This was a world order, which was a new world order at that time. But now, this became the old world order, this first one. Now, they start this new world order with the second one. That's why God said to Abraham, he said this here. 
He said, he told him to count and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. Okay? And this is what it's all about right there. But you never learned that. And you need to know that in order to move to the next level. What happened in history? Let's deal with it. In 1619, August 1st, 1619, you had the assembly, first assembly, a political body got together in Jamestown, Virginia, in the church. And at this time, they had this assembly. And what they did at that date, August the 1st, they gave the law to afflict a dentist servant slash slaves, okay? And uh, you had a captain, Captain Williams or something like that, a captain, he came and brought that petition. You can look at that, you can see this in the, uh, in the history of Virginia about the assembly. Now, also, they had on that date uh, the price setting the price of tobacco. So these two laws was specifically talked about at that particular time in the history, in the history books. Now, other, now you had 50 years from that, and what you had in 16, 1669, you had uh, the, the 1669 Act, okay, of killing slaves, okay. Now, 1669 Act on killing slaves. That means that they could, if they kill a slave, they will be not hold accountable like they will if they kill a white person or someone else. So to kill a slave was a was a, a law that they passed that they didn't go around killing their slaves. Now though they needed their slaves to work, but it was a law passed at that time. It was the 1669 Act passed that they could kill slaves without any repercussion. Now, and this also was the time that uh, the British brought slaves from uh, uh, the west coast of Africa, a little island that they had, an area outside there they had to bring them in, Bent's Island, something like that, that they had the right to bring them. So you had this uh, at this point. In the next point, uh, C, you had 1716, the French slave colonies in Biloxi. Uh, you had the French uh, officers got together and they... Um, by the order of the king, they uh, sought in motion the slave trade out west in Biloxi at that particular time. If you study this here very carefully, you'll see that it falls exactly on the date in which they sought that law out. That point falls on the date. What happened after then? You had at this jubilee, and they never set them free. And uh, they never followed what the Bible say. On the Jubilee, set them free, forgive them of the debt. Said none of that happened. Okay, uh, you got point D. You got on D. It had in 1765. You had the Thompson Act. And what was the Thompson Act about? The Thompson Act was given, and you had a lot of Indian laws was passed during these times as well. Okay, so you got to remember you had two sets of people. The Bible mostly show you of that one set, but both sets of people. You have to know how to read and understand how those individuals tie in with it all. And I, one day I get in there and I'm going to tie them in so you can see it because they is there. Now, you had the Thompsonite. What was the Thompsonite all about? Thompsonite <coughs> was about the colonists were not willing. They weren't paying taxes and et cetera. And the British soldier was coming over and they were sort of fighting them with the Indian wars, et cetera. Because the Indian, them black, them blacks that they were putting into slavery under that, them Indians going fighting them, trying to get their people free. And so the British soldier was there to try to keep them from uh, getting these Negroes free and, and getting back, keep the Indians from getting, or the black Indians from getting back their land. And we got to understand this. Because our people was here and they, this land, was most all this land, most of the Indian was black Indians at that time. And that's the thing in history they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know that they are on your land, black man. They don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that some of your people actually came from the Indians. You had more of the Indian, black Indians being put in slavery, and you came from that more than you had the ones coming from the slave trade out of Africa. But they don't want to talk about that or teach you that. You don't see that in his history book. You got to do your research, and you understand this stuff. Now, what happened <clears throat> after the Thompson Act? You had E at this particular time. In 1819, uh, act of Congress, okay, abolishing the abolishment of slavery, okay. You had what you had. You had the British and you had the Spaniards uh, government coming together because they saying, look, we're tired of these 
these uh, Indian wars and stuff, and the Indian come killing these, and these slaves and stuff, these erections, they come in and, and breaking, uh, uh, and destroying the property and killing people, and we need to go, want no more of these, in, these slaves to come out of Africa, et cetera, because a lot of them in that last time, in that time, it was like some of them came from uh, West Africa, I mean, uh, South Africa and stuff like that, like them Zulu type Negroes, and they weren't going for that kind of stuff. So you had them, them tying in with the Indian and them other black Indians and stuff like that. And see, they don't talk about all that. They wasn't going for it, so they had to do something. And by that time, in uh, in E, what they call halfway point, that's when you had this this uh, going on where they said, no more, let's go haul no more in. No more slaves coming in the territory. What happened after the end? Hell, uh, here at this time, this is what you call it the golden ratio time. You had the uh, an F, you had in 1865, the end of slavery. After the Civil War, you had the Emancipation Proclamation, and you find out the Emancipation Proclamation happened, and then you had the, uh, the abolishing slavery. And you see that happen at the time of the golden ratio. When you take the golden ratio and you divide it, and I want to show you how you do that. You take the 400 years, this is sacred geometry now. You take the 400 years, which equal the days of 144,000 days, when you're dealing with 360 days a year, you take 1.618, the golden ratio, and you divide it. You divide it into 144,000 days, which equals the 400 years of 360, and you're going to get 89,219 days. You divide our 365.25 days, so we can find out the exact time that we're dealing with, and you got 244 years, okay? You got 1619 plus 244 equals 1836. Tell me whether I know what I'm talking about or I don't. In 1863, what that was, Lincoln released the Emancipation Proclamation. That's when he released it. See, we got to know what we're talking about if we say we are messenger of God. We got to know what we're talking about if we tell people that God has sent you. You got to know this stuff. Anybody don't know this kind of stuff. Black folks, our ancient Egyptian brothers and sisters, Fathers and mothers knew this stuff. There was advanced culture. And this Eurocentric man have robbed this knowledge and have left you out of this knowledge so he could run this world the way that he chose to run without you participating. All you're doing is following this man and don't know. You're following his God, his Jesus. That ain't your Jesus. That's something he done created through Serapis. And we got to come out of this. I know my mom, my dad. I know I was too. I followed that Jesus. That's the only Jesus I knew. I followed that. I believed that because I was told that. But it was always something bothering me when I did it because I couldn't see the blessing for my people as they talk about it. I seen the white man always get this and we always get that. And I knew it got to be something wrong with this Lord. And God had to bring me to the reality of things. Come on, black man and black woman. You need to come to the reality of things. You're catching hell, even now. Yes, you got some boule Negroes. They ride around and they, and they Rolls Royce. They ride around and they brand new Mercedes. They have this and that. And uh, the ones who, you, you know, under these orders, they'll tell you. Even some of them, entertainers will tell you. If we ain't part of the order, we ain't going to be in the loop. That's how they got it. You follow the, 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 the way that they got it if you're going to be successful and let the rest of them perish. But that's not what God got signed up for us people. And we got to see this. Now, let's understand this. If you're dealing with 16, 19, and 400 years or 365.25 days, it'll take you to all the first 16, 19. Okay? We must see this thing. We must see that we're dealing with 600, uh, 16, 19, and 400 uh, years of 360 days. Took us to October the 30th, 2013. It was the time of the Civil Rights Act. And what we see in, in 2013, we see the Supreme Court overturn some things. What they are doing now, they're overturning stuff. 
They're trying to get you to be into this new world order that they're going to put you into. They're going to put your behind back in slavery if you don't wake the hell up. And this is what time it is. Excuse my French, but brothers, I love you. And I don't want my children being in this situation when we could do something about it right now. It's time for us to wake up and we can see this. But how much more time I got? And we got to see this. We got to understand what's going on. We got here the Supreme Court invalidated the key, uh, invalidated a key part of the of the Voting Rights Act of two thousand in two thousand thirteen. We got to see it even on the Obama watch. It was taken away from us, and we got to start studying this. We got to start watching what's going on. We go and watching these football games and these basketball games and all this other nonsense. Why the Supreme Court and uh, uh, and the legal system is just eroding our rights away. And we sitting back and, and, and the preacher ain't there to tell you what's going on. Because you don't know about the five laws of God. You don't know the significance of that. You don't know that you got to teach these people that they got to have their own economic ventures. That they got to have their own political structure. These niggas ain't telling you about no black nationalism. They ain't telling you about no black messiah. And the Bible is talking about it. And we got to wake up. We got to start seeing this thing the way it really is, okay? If you did not understand, and if you do not understand the power of the arts, they will enslave you again. And the Father did not want that, do not want that. God don't want us. He's going to have his word fulfilled. See, the U.S. Central trying to change time. He's trying to change time. He's trying to do go against the Father's will for you. He's trying to put us back into that condition that Pisces had us in under deception. He's trying to keep you from going in the age of Aquarius, an age of peace and harmony. And we got to see these things. Daniel 713. Okay. Daniel 7 uh, uh, 13 is going to deal with uh, one like the son of man. That's talking about the kingdom come. See, now, let's go back to the part that I talked about the brother and the brothers talking about Jesus. See, this is, this one that's coming that Daniel's talking about, he is Jesus. The one that's going to walk the earth, he is Jesus. And see, the Eurocentric know that. That's why they took the name Jesus and they turned it around and they took the name Jewish and they turned it around so you won't understand his name. They know this. It's nothing new. They know this. See, the individuals back at the time of alchemy and before, some of them was time travelers that wrote, and you had some of them with seals that could look in different ways and use the arts to see things. So you had enough individuals writing. So these things have been known. We got to go into this so we can see this. Daniel 7.22 until the ancients of days came and judgment was given unto the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. See, God wants you to come up, my people. God wants the righteous to possess the kingdoms now. See, you can't possess the kingdom by hating one another. You can't possess the kingdom by one having all the substance and the other have little. It can't be like that. God wants this thing right. The American Negro must return back to ancient Egypt teaching of their fathers. And you're going to see a related scripture in Isaiah 19, 23 to 25. We must come back to the fathers, people. We must understand what God meant when he said, Blessed be Egypt, my people. Assyria, the works of my hand, and Israel, my inheritance. We must understand this stuff because it's very, very important. We must understand how to count the stars the right way. We must understand why these things was written, drawn on the back of our dollar bill. We must understand this stuff. See, they showing you what they've been doing to you in plain sight. You know, if you want to hide something, put it right on the dirt, right in their sight. They don't know. And that's what they've been doing. And these 
Boule Negroes have no clue to this, and they part of certain these organizations, but they just don't know because they never taught them this stuff. See, when you're a messenger of God, God's going to make sure you have the information you need. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about when we begin to see Abraham and Moses. You got to look at Moses and start reading this stuff because Moses put you right at our time right now. And I'm going to close this out. But in Exodus 3, 2, I want you to see this. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, to Moses, and I want you to see this, unto Moses, in the flame of a fire, out of the midst of a bush. Now, we got to understand that that's right in our time. This ain't about no, no 4,000 years ago. And most people think that. Anisha will know what this means. And we got to see this. What is it? An angel of the Lord. An angel of the Lord. It didn't say the Lord. It said the angel of the Lord. People get this confused. Then later he'll talk about the Lord said to Moses. But he said it through the angel of the Lord. And what did he say? Moses wanted to say, hey, who is this? Him? And, and he said in, in uh, Exodus 3.14, I am that I am. That's talking about the angel of the Lord. And who is the angel of the Lord that they're talking about? They're saying, I am that I am. We got to understand this. Look at this word. Look at this um, Hebrew typology. I am that I am. I am. Take that A out of there and put the zero. Be Put the O where it's supposed to be. I am thought. I am thought. The one who helped build the civilization of ancient Egypt. I am thought. That's who God sent. That's the one that we call Melchizedek. That's my spiritual God. That's why I know this stuff the way I, I know it. The white man know the thought have to come and liberate that individual to bring you up and he don't want you to ever know it. So he want to take you from Egypt. He know this stuff, but you don't know it and your preacher don't know it. And that's why we in the condition we in. And we got to come the heck up out of this condition. And you're talking about I am, I am. That's God himself. That's thought. And that's who he sent. And that's who he sent. And at the time when Abraham came, Machazadeh, who was thought, Machazadeh was the one there, the king and priest, the one who Jesus took the priesthood out, the Machazadeh. That's thought, people. And you need to understand that. This man done, this, whoo, he done deceived you and you following this nonsense and got your preacher in the pulpit teaching this nonsense, and you don't want to listen. But one day, you're going to have to listen, my brother, because God ain't going to deal with hard heads for so long before he start doing some things that make you listen. Now, I'd rather for God to, people to listen without the confusion, because God will send war in your door. He'll shake your nation up. You think you're going to be captured and taken up to another place, and he'll let you know that I send bombs in your nation. I will do what he's, what the, uh, they're talking about, the Russian uh, president said. He want to bomb Florida. See, God will do things and permit things to happen. It may not be Florida, and I hope not to be Florida, but I don't want another American bomb, but Look, people, let me tell you something. This is a bad time we're living in now, 2018 to 2020. God wants your attention. So we got to listen to this. I am thought. Thought I am. That's what that means. You never hear this talk to you by anyone else. This is what this really all about, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you the truth. God used these individuals. God used these servants. These are our brothers. These ain't somebody out there to be against us or we against them. These are our brothers that God sent from the spiritual realm to de help deliberate us from this condition. You see, at the time of Jesus, when he sent uh, Elijah during Mount Federation, where he took his disciples, Jesus took his disciples, and he gave, brought the, uh, 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 Elijah and another prophet. See, God sent them from the spiritual realm to help guide us into God's will. And to the source, we. And we got to see this. Now, like I say, please, purchase the book, 
Judgment of America, the other book, you go on the same website, you'll see Black Knots Numbers, Prophecy of America Future. Please purchase this book. Help this ministry grow. We need to understand this knowledge. We need to move forward. In this era, it has this knowledge of the prophet's son. Okay? You need to have that. You need to do your own studying with this so you can be able to see where it's coming from. That way you'll know that God will deliver us and we are the ones that are going to help deliver the world. But first, God got to deliver you so he could deliver, have you to help deliver the world. And this is what's important. You are the first peoples of this world. You are the originators of this world. You are the originals. So you got to do your job, black folk. You can't sit back no longer. I love you. God love you. And we got to do this right thing. Like I say, purchase a book, Judgment of America. You could go on Amazon. You could go to Arthur House. Uh, you could go to uh, Barnes & Noble. And you could get these books. Please. Purchase this book by your friend one. Please help this ministry grow so we can do the right thing. Okay? Send your donations. Scroll through our uh, other lectures and you'll see an address. Send your donations to this organization so we can do some things and we can reach more and more people. And I say like I always say, I love you. God love you. We love you. And have a beautiful day.